Okay. So Arjun said, I really don't know where you are. Where should I absorb my mind? Can you tell me in detail where you are? And Lord Krishna said, the detail of that is endless. But I'll give you certain examples. So that's where the last chapter was. Lord Krishna gave about 75 different examples. He said, one of them you can choose and see God me in that. Okay. Whether it's in a river or in a sun or a moon or even in animals or even in trees. But see the divine in that person or in that thing. Okay, that's what Lord Krishna said. So now Arjun is asking another question in the beginning of this chapter 11. He says, my illusion is dispelled by the profound words of wisdom. So he's not delusional anymore. He said, you spoke out of compassion for me about the supreme secret of the self. Oh, Krishan, I have heard from you in detail about the origin and dissolution of beings and your immutable glory because from him from his own mouth he heard all that then he said oh lord you are as you have said yet i wish to see your divine cosmic form O supreme lord so he doesn't say that i don't believe you he says i do believe you because your nature is compassionate and you love me, you gave me all the details, but I want to see that also. It's almost like somebody says that there is a beautiful place. You say, I do believe that there's a beautiful place, but I like to see it myself also, with my own eyes. And so Arjun said, oh Lord, if you think it is possible for me to see your universal form, then oh Lord of the yogis, Show me your transcendental form. So in the previous verse, he says, I wish to see. He's almost like a commanding Lord Krishna, his guru. But then he realizes that you really com cannot command your guru. You can request, but you cannot command. So that's why he becomes a little softer over here. He says, if you think it is possible for me to see, please show me. Then Lord Krishna says, O oh Arjun, behold my hundreds and thousands of multifarious divine forms of different colors and shapes. Behold all the celestial beings and many wonders never seen before. Also behold the entire creation, animate, inanimate, and whatever else you would like to see all at once in my body. Okay. Remember last time I told you, it's like that one divine in many. Now it's many in one. He says, it's all in me. It's all here. He says, see, behold. But then Lord Krishna says, but you are not able to see me with your physical eyes. See, physical eyes can see only physical things. In order to see the divinity, we need divine eyes. So that's why he says, therefore, I give you the divine eyes to see my majestic power and glory. The proper instrument is needed to see anything. See, even a little, we use the microscope to see all the bacteria, viruses. It has to be a strength of that microscope. But the strength of the telescope has to be there to see those things, whether we want to see far or whether we want to see near. And those are, again, the physical things. Over here, we are talking about divine things. So he says to see the divinity, you need the divine eyes. In Sanskrit, it's called Jnana Chakshu. He says, I give it to those. Now, Sanjay said, because it's not only Arjun is saying, 
You remember Sanjay, the charioteer, sitting in the palace miles and miles away? He is exactly seeing and hearing what's happening there. So he's hearing the dialogue between these two and he's seeing what Arjun is saying. So Sanjay said, O king, he's talking to that blind king. O king, having said this, Lord Krishna, the great lord of the mystic power of yoga, revealed the supreme majestic form to Arjun. Arjun saw the universal form of the Lord with many mouths and eyes. So this is again Sanjay is talking to his king. And many marvelous visions with numerous divine ornaments, holding many divine weapons, wearing divine garlands and apparel, anointed with celestial perfumes and ointments, full of all wonders, the limitless God, with the faces on all sides. So this is the form Arjun is seeing and Sanjay is seeing too. There are many other yogis, they are, were seeing it too in their samadhi. But one person other than Arjun and Sanjay was seeing is the author of this book. I'm talking about the Bhagavad Gita, not the translator of this particular book in English, but Rishi Vyas who wrote Bhagavad Gita. If the splendor of thousands of suns were to blaze forth all at once in the sky, even that would not resemble the splendor of that exalted being. Arjun saw the entire universe divided in many ways, but standing as all in one and one in all in the transcendental body of Krishna, the Lord of celestial rulers. It's just like a, I told you, it's a many in one. So it's like a God's body. That's why it's called a Vishavarup. It's a universal form. He saw one body of Krishna and everything in him. So Arjun saw the entire universe divided in many ways, but standing as all in one and one in all in the transcendental body of Krishna, the Lord of celestial rulers. Having seen the cosmic form of the Lord, Arjun was filled with wonder and his hairs standing on end. It's almost like a goosebumps. When you see something so big, so magnificent, which you have never seen before, you do get the goosebumps. Bowed his head to the Lord and prayed with the folded hands. So his hands just go into this posture automatically. What did Arjun say? He said, Oh Lord, I see in your body all supernatural controllers and multitudes of beings, sages and celestials. Oh Lord of the universe, I see you everywhere with infinite forms, with many arms, stomachs, faces and eyes. Oh universal form, I see neither your beginning nor the middle nor the end. That's how big the body was. I see you with your crown, club, discus, and massive radiance, difficult to behold, shining all around like the immeasurable brilliance and blazing fire of the sun. See, crown, crown symbolizes is the Lord of this universe. Club, discus, and radiance. Radiance is a light coming out of him. Club and the discus are two things. Symbolically, you will see it in Vishnu's hand. Club is to wake us up. It's like a hitting something, wake up. And if they don't wake up, there's a discus to inhalate. So these are like a symbolism Arjun was used to. So that's what he saw in the hand of Vishnu. I believe you are the supreme being to be realized. You are the ultimate resort of the universe. You are the spirit and protector of the eternal order, dharma. I see you with infinite power, without beginning, middle or end, with many arms, with the sun and the moon as your eyes, with your mouth as a blazing fire, scorching all the universe with your radiance. O oh Lord, 
you pervade the entire space between heaven and earth in all directions. Seeing your marvelous and terrible form, the three worlds are trembling with fear. So it's marvelous because he has never seen anything like it before. Terrible because it's, it's, it's just like a, a, he sees a, the death in this also. He sees there's a destruction also, there's a construction also. Everything has happened in that form. Hosts of supernatural rulers enter into you. Some with folded hands sing your names and glories in fear. A multitude of perfected beings hail and adore you with abundant praises. So the people who know this is God, they know the glory of God, they understand it, sure, they will hail and they will sing the glories. But other people, they are fearful of this form. All the celestial beings gaze at you in amazement, seeing your infinite form with many mouths, eyes, arms, thighs, feet, stomachs, and many fearful tusks. The worlds are trembling with fear, and so do I, O mighty Lord. So he recognizes everybody else is terrified. And he admits that I am terrified too. I am frightened and find neither peace nor courage. O Krishna, after seeing your effulgent and colorful form, touching the sky and your wide open mouth with large shining eyes, I lose my sense of direction and find no comfort after seeing your mouths with fearful tusks glowing like fires of cosmic dissolution. Have mercy on me, O Lord of celestial rulers and refuge of the universe. Okay, so he wanted to see it. He begged to see it, but he didn't know what will he see. So that's why he got very terrified at this sight. All my cousin brothers, along with the hosts of other kings and warriors of the other side, together with the chief warriors on our side, are also quickly entering into your fearful mouths with the terrible tusks. Some are seen caught in between the tusks with their heads crushed. So that's how terrible the scene was. These warriors of the mortal world are entering your blazing mouths as many torrents of rivers enter into the ocean. It's like a, so swiftly they are entering into you. All these people are rapidly rushing into your mouths for destruction as moths rush with great speed into the blazing flame for destruction. You are licking up all the worlds with your flaming mouths, swallowing them from all sides. Your powerful radiance is filling the entire universe with effulgence and burning it, O oh Krishna. Tell me, who are you in such a fierce form? My salutations to you, O oh best of all celestial rulers, be merciful. I wish to understand you. O oh, primal being, because I do not know your mission. So he wants to know exactly why this kind of a form. Lord Krishna said, I am death. The mighty destroyer of the world. I have come here to destroy all these people. Even without your participation in the war, all the warriors standing arrayed in the opposing armies shall cease to exist. So he is showing a, a little peep into the future to Arjuna. Therefore, get up and attain glory. Conquer your enemies and enjoy a prosperous kingdom. I have already destroyed all these warriors. You be a mere instrument of mine, O Arjuna. Kill all these great warriors who are already killed by me. Do not fear. You will certainly conquer the enemies in the battle. Therefore, fight. Sanjay said, Having heard these words of Krishna, the crowned Arjun. Why the crowned Arjun? So symbolically, he is saying that Arjun is going to win this war. Trembling with folded hands, 
prostrated with fear, spoke to Krishna in a choked voice. Arjun said, Rightly, O Krishna, the world delights and rejoices in glorifying you. Terrified demons flee in all directions. The hosts of sages bow to you in adoration. Why should they not, O great soul, bow to you, the original creator, who is even greater than Brahma, the creator of material worlds, O infinite Lord, O God of all celestial rulers, O abode of the universe, you are both eternal and temporal, and the supreme being that is beyond eternal and temporal. You are the primal God, the most ancient person. You are the ultimate result of the entire universe. You are the knower, the object of knowledge, and the supreme abode. O Lord of the infinite form, you pervade the entire universe. You are the fire, the wind, the water god, the moon god, the creator Brahma, as well as the father of the creator Brahma and the controller of death. Salutations to you a thousand times and again and again salutations to you. So these are almost like prayers sung by Arjun after he saw this. My salutations to you from front and from behind. O oh Lord, my obeisance to you from all sides. You are infinite valor and boundless might. You pervade everything and therefore you are everywhere and in everything. Considering you merely as a friend and not knowing your greatness, I have inadvertently Address you as O Krishna, O Yadav, and O friend, merely out of affection or carelessness. So he's recognizing that this is God. I considered him just my friend or my cousin. He's God. So he's, that's why he says, carelessly, I might have called you with all these ordinary names. In whatever way I may have insulted you in jokes, while playing, reposing in bed, sitting or at meals, when alone or in front of others, O Krishna, the immeasurable one, I implore you for forgiveness. You are the father of this animate and inanimate world and the greatest guru to be worshipped. No one is even equal to you in the three worlds. How can there be one greater than you, who being of incomparable glory? Therefore, O adorable Lord, I seek your mercy by going down and prostrating my body before you. Bear with me as a father to his son, as a friend to a friend, and as a husband to his wife, O Lord. Beholding that which has never been seen before delights me, and yet my mind is tormented with fear. Therefore, O God of celestial rulers, the refuge of the universe, have mercy on me and show me your four-armed form. Okay, so this is like a, a he wants to see the original form, not really four-armed. If you look at the Sanskrit. That means he just wanted to see the gentler form. Okay, It's not that Lord Krishna had four arms, but uh, uh, we do see Vishnu representing having four arms. Okay, But he wanted to see Lord Krishna's original form. I wish to see you with a crown, holding mace and discus in your hand. Therefore, O Lord, with thousand arms and universal form, please appear in the four armed form. Okay, so in this verse he says in Sanskrit also four-armed, not in the previous one. Lord Krishna said, O Arjun, being pleased with you, I have shown you through my own yogic powers, my particular supreme, shining, universal, infinite and primal form that has never been seen before by anyone other than you. O Arjun, neither by study of the Vedas, 
nor by sacrifice nor by charity nor by rituals nor by severe austerities can i be seen in this cosmic form by anyone other than you in this human world so what does it mean all those things unnecessary no all those things study of the vedas sacrifice charity rituals austerities they prepare us to be ready so that we can see that form too okay so it's not that it is only for arjun alone later on he will tell us what kind of a qualities we need to cultivate by using all these means so all these are the means not the end okay do not be perturbed and confused by seeing such a terrible form of mine as this with fearless and cheerful mind now behold my four armed form so again there is no four armed in the sanskrit verse sanjay said after speaking like this to arjun krishna revealed his four armed form and then assuming his pleasant human form lord krishna the great one consoled arjun who was terrified arjun said o krishna seeing this lovely human form of yours i have now become tranquil and normal again lord krishna said this four armed form of mine that you have seen is very difficult indeed to see even celestial controllers are ever longing to see this form this four armed form of mine that you have just seen cannot be seen even by study of the vedas or by austerity or by acts of charity or by the performance of rituals but by single minded devotion see this is the key verse over here if we want to see this universal form or the divine form how do we see it by single minded devotion and devotion means a love i can be seen in this form can be known in essence and also can be reached o oh, archer so not only see it but really know it too one who dedicates all works to me that's what we learned in the previous chapters in karm yoga chapters one who dedicates all works to me to whom i am the supreme goal who is my devotee who has no attachment attachment to the non god or non self is talking about him and who is free from malice toward any creature that means no hatred for anybody reach is me o arjun so in other words in this last verse he is telling us to cultivate these qualities if we really want to see god everywhere because that's what arjun did he saw him everywhere there was no place where he did not see him he said i don't see your beginning i don't see your end i don't see the middle it's everywhere so if we want to see it we got to dedicate dedicate all our actions to god that means to do everything keeping god in your mind when we are doing our duties our responsibilities keeping god in mind we'll do actions better it could be cleaning the floor or teaching somebody learning from somebody taking care of the children taking care of your company it could be anything working with your patients writing reading whatever you are doing he says dedicate all work to me keep god in your mind that means you you are perfecting and purifying your actions that way and i am the supreme goal so there are short term goals but supreme goal is always god our ultimate is that we want to merge back to him who is my devotee so love god who has no attachment to the material world and who is free from malice toward any creature so these are the five qualities we need to cultivate he says if we do that you'll reach me and we'll see elaboration on this verse 
in the next chapter. Because next chapter is the culmination of devotion. See, these last five chapters, starting from chapter 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are the chapters about the devotion. So now in the this chapter, next chapter, chapter number 12, the title is Bhakti Yoga. So your bhakti or the love for God has reached to its climax. So that's where we will see the further elaboration on these five qualities which he mentioned in this verse number 55. So just like in a karam yoga, ordinary action, when it becomes super, it becomes a karam yoga. Bhakti, the simple rituals, a simple uh, singing the glories of God, ultimate, ultimately it becomes a bhakti yoga. The same way the last six chapters of Bhagavad Gita are about the knowledge, jnana. The ordinary jnana, ultimately it becomes a jnana yoga. So that's how Bhagavad Gita is divided in three paths of yoga. Karam yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga. Okay, so next week we will read chapter 12, the Bhakti Yoga, the path of devotion. Or ultimately union with the devotion. Yoga really means the union. The union with the ultimate, with the help of the devotion. The first we learned how to have a union with the help of action. Now, last part will be union with the help of knowledge. Okay, so any questions? So this is the... Um, the simple reading of this chapter. Just do not get confused uh, um, with so many words in there or repetition also in there. Just remember that Lord Krishna is answering Arjun's question and he is uh, 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 because Arjun really had the urge, the strong urge to see God. So Lord Krishna said, okay, I'll write. I'll uh, bless you so that you can see see me. He must have seen the qualities in him too. That's why Arjun could see. So if we have that kind of intense desire to see, we can put our request also to God. God will listen to us also. So in our first class today for the little kids, there was a story I was reading to them and that story is a real story actually that this young boy he wanted to his father said feed God because his father fed God every day but he was going out of town he said why don't you feed God and he goes into his mandar and he takes the plate of food and he says God eat God doesn't eat he just stays there he says, I want you to eat how come you're not eating my father will come back and he'll get mad at me that I did not feed you he cries loudly. God comes and eats. When he comes out of the temple, the rest of the family members, they said, give us prashad. He said, I don't have any prashad left to give you because God ate it all. So that kind of a intense desire that God should eat my food. The same way Arjun cried, he wanted to see God. And God said, okay, all right, see me. I am everywhere. But then he got shaken up. He said, no. I just want to see your original form. I understand. You are God. Okay. So any question, comment? No? Nobody? Okay. So if you don't have any question, we have a... a uh, birthday boy here today. So let's just uh, bless him. Uh, Kim, it's a man's birthday today. Oh. Right? So we'll all bless him. So many you want to uh, 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 take the uh, Sankalap also? Yeah, put your hands together. Yeah, that's the real celebration. Done for us, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Repeat after me, please. Me. Me. Apne. Apne. Agle. Agle. Janam din tak. Janam din tak. 
और अधिक और अधिक शुभ गुणों को शुभ गुणों को अपने जीवन में अपने जीवन में लाऊंगा लाऊंगा अपने दोषों को अपने दोषों को दूर करूंगा दूर करूंगा योग अभ्यास को योग अभ्यास को निरंतर करता रहूंगा निरंतर करता रहूंगा और श्री प्रभु जी के और श्री प्रभु जी के चरणों में चरणों में भक्ति को भक्ति को और अधिक दृढ़ करने का दृढ़ करने का यत्न करूंगा यत्न करूंगा ओके सो ही जस्ट प्रॉमिस्ड दैट दिस कमिंग ईयर दिस इज द ट्रेडिशन एट द आश्रम वी फॉलो एस्टेब्लिश बाय आवर गुरु जी दैट ही इज मेकिंग द प्रॉमिस दैट हे this coming year i will try to get rid of some bad habits in me and i will cultivate some good habits and i will do yoga every day because this ashram is a yoga ashram so yoga at a physical level mental level right so yoga and then the fourth promise he made is that he will increase his devotion for god okay so these four things so now all of you please repeat after me give him blessing so that he can fulfill these promises which he just made right now to god okay he manohar he manohar pam pam ayushman ayushman varchasvi varchasvi tejasvi tejasvi chiriman chiriman ya ho ho yeah yeah give him blessings for his birthday and for his upcoming surgery also oh okay. uh, he is having a, a knee surgery monday so so that that goes uh, uh, as they expect i shouldn't say pain free but uh, there will be some pain but he, he should be able to tolerate the pain right strength to go, go through that surgery Okay. So happy all. birthday man. Happy thank you. Birthday. Thank you. Love you. Happy birthday. I know. Thank you very much. You got a beautiful family. Yes. Yes. So many Happy birthday Manny ji. Thank you Manjula. Namaste. Happy birthday Manny ji. Happy birthday Manny ji. Thank you. 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 One. Right knee. Right. Happy birthday, Manny! Happy birthday, everybody! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not happy birthday, everybody! It's not our birthday, Rani. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Happy, happy birthday, Manny! Oh, good luck, everybody! Thank you. Thank you. Happy thank birthday. you all. Good luck, thank good luck, everybody! Thank you. I I will need that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I'll come through with the good wishes I got today from all of you. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. I'll send blessings, Manny. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Hush. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. See you tomorrow, Hush. Okay. Okay. Bye. I'll be here. Okay. Bye. Okay. 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 I she she attends the this second class. class. She attends oh, that uh, yeah, yeah, young yeah, adults yeah. class. Yeah, I had gone for the corona test today, so I I was tied up there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.